Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, series of presentation. This time we are now um, be discussing or I will be discussing with you the part 3 of lipids. So at this point, we are now in the study of uh, another group of lipids. Remember, we are classifying, we were discussing the classification of lipids based on function. So another classification of lipids is called emulsification lipids. And uh, examples of this emulsification lipids are the bile acids. First, what is an emulsifier? Emulsifier is a substance that can disperse and stabilize water in soluble substances as colloidal particles in aqueous, aqueous solution. What it means is this emulsifier can break the surface tension. Say for example, you have water and oil. As we all know, the two substances cannot uh, mix together. Okay, being uh, one is polar, the other one is non-polar. Water is polar, oil is non-polar. But when you add, when you uh, add some emulsifier, okay, what happens is the surface tension on water will be uh, will decrease okay as a result the oil will disperse in uh, aqueous solution as um, colloidal particles as you notice the oil particle or the oil will um, will be able to penetrate the um, the surface okay or the water um, environment okay because the surface tension has been um, has been decreased okay and that's what emulsifier does so um, lipids that could uh, perform that uh, function are called bile acids okay bile acids are derived from cholesterol and their functions um, as I said, they are emulsifying agent. Okay, these bile acids they make the dietary lipids soluble or become soluble in aqueous environment of the digestive tract. Okay, so remember when uh, these dietary dietary lipids such as the TAG or the triacyl glycerol they are nonpolar okay they don't uh, interact with water so the role of these bile acids is to make those dietary lipids become soluble in the aqueous environment approximately one-third of cholesterol produced by the liver is converted to bile acid so these bile acids act similar to the action of soap remember soap is uh, um, something like it it acts as an um, emulsifier because um, soap bridges or links the nonpolar dirt on the surface of the skin and it makes uh, the dirt soluble to the water there are two common um, bile acids, the glycocolic acid and taurocolic acid. So take note that um, these bile acids are built on the steroid nucleus. Remember the steroid nucleus? Okay, there are uh, three cyclohexane ring and one cyclopentane ring. And uh, some um, substituents have been added here in glycocolic acid there are three hydroxyl groups okay and this red thing here this red uh, substituent here is 
ang amino acid. The name of this amino acid is called glycine. That's why when a glycine and this cholic acid are combined, the resulting molecule is glycocholic acid. Okay? Now, here we have another bile acid called taurocholic acid. Okay? Now, the red molecule or the red substituent here is called taurine. The taurine is linked to a cholic acid. Okay? Without this taurine, it's called cholic acid. Without this glycine, it's called cholic acid. Okay? So, taurine plus cholic acid, taurocholic acid. All right? Another um, classification of lipids based on function are called, or is called um, messenger lipids. Okay, this includes um, steroid hormones. Okay, under this class, we have adrenocorticoid hormones. These are produced by the adrenal glands. These adrenal glands are small organs located on top of the kidney. There are two types of adrenocorticoid. And um, as you could notice, the structure of these steroid hormones are, or the structure is built on the um, steroid nucleus also. Okay, two types of mineralocorticoid hormones. We have mineralocorticoid, which con control the balance of the sodium and potassium ion in the cell. The primary um, example of mineralocorticoid is an aldosterone. Another example is glucocorticoid. These are these uh, steroid hormones are widely used for inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Okay, some derivatives of this control glucose metabolism, and these are the glucocorticoids that are uh, available in the market. All right, then the next. Uh, Classification based on function. Okay, we have messenger lipids, example, or group of examples. We have acosanoids. When we say acosanoids, these are molecules. These are, uh, yeah, these are lipids that are built on 20 carbon atom. A molecule that has 20 carbon atoms. Okay. So, eicosanoids are derived from arachidonic acid. Remember, if you could recall the examples of fatty acid, arachidonic acid is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. It has 20 carbon atoms with four double bonds. Okay, these are the effects of eicosanoids. All right. They have profound physiological effects at extremely low concentration. So even at low concentration, these messenger lipids could uh, would have um, great effect. Okay, eicosanoids are hormone-like molecule. They exert effects on tissue where they are synthesized. So unlike other hormones. Um, other hormones, they need to be transported from the organ where they are synthesized to the organ or to the tissue where they are needed. However, uh, these eicosanoids, they are produced in the tissue or in the cell where they are needed. Alright? They have very short life, meaning they could uh, be decomposed when their action, when their effect has been uh, felt. By an organism. These are the physiological effects of eicosanoid, which includes uh, they are involved in the inflammatory responses, production of pain and fever, 
regulation of blood pressure, induction of blood clotting, production of um, control of reproductive function, and regulation of sleep and wake cycle. There are three principal types of eicosanoids. Okay, once again, eicosanoids are molecules that have uh, 20 carbon atoms. That's why eicos, eicosa, eicosane. If it is uh, 20 carbon atoms saturated, that's eicosane, 20. Okay, the first uh, principal type is called prostaglandin. Okay. Uh, historically, prostaglandins were thought to be uh, um, present only in the prostate gland. In fact, this was uh, isolated okay, in that uh, organ. Um, prostaglandins have 20 carbon atom. It's derived from a 20 carbon fatty acid, in case a cosanoic acid. Okay? that has a cyclopentane ring and oxygen containing functional group so here's the structure of a prostaglandin okay there are 20 carbons atoms and then cyclopentane ring this is the cyclopentane ring with uh, some oxygen atoms there all right there are uh, three um, examples here the prostaglandin A2, prostaglandin E1, and prostaglandin F3A. I believe there are some more examples of prostaglandin. Uh, prostaglandins are involved in raising body temperature, okay, inhibiting the secretion of gastric juices, increasing the secretion of productive mucose layer in the stomach, and then it's involved in the relaxation and contraction of smooth muscle. The second type of um, eicosanoid is called thromboxane. Thromboxanes are uh, molecules that are also derived from a fatty acid that contains 20 carbon atoms. But in the molecule, it's um, you can see some... Um, Deribatization, it has a cyclic ether ring. Okay, this is the cyclic um, ether and a and oxygen containing functional group. Okay, an ox, uh, hydroxyl group here. So here you have uh, thromboxane, thromboxane A2, and thromboxane B2. Um, thromboxanes, what they do is they promote platelet aggregation. Okay, this is the synthesis or pathway of um, formation of thromboxane and some prostaglandin. So, it begins from arachidonic acid. This is the fatty acid, 20 carbon atoms, okay, four, four double bonds. So, from a fatty acid, arachidonic acid, it will be catalyzed there's an enzyme called cyclooxygenase or uh, it is abbreviated as cox or cyclooxygenase um, the action of cyclooxygenase um, catalyzes the formation of prostaglandin prostaglandin uh, g2 and then prostaglandin g2 becomes prostaglandin h2 okay then from prostaglandin h2 it becomes prostacyclin Okay, and then uh, the, the pathway follows. As you notice that from prostaglandin, okay, um, from prostaglandin, it can become um, thromboxane E2 and then thromboxane B2. Okay, now um, remember that as I said earlier, prostaglandins are involved in um, one of the some, some physiological effects of prostaglandin is they are involved in inflammatory responses and uh, um, put, um, increase in the um, body temperature. So that's why what, uh, what we do is when, when we have uh, uh, body pain or muscle pain or even, for example, um, high temperature 
And when we have fever, we take um, we take um, over the counter NSAID, okay, or non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. Example, paracetamol, ibuprofen, okay, or some analgesics such as aspirin, they are NSAID. Okay, this NSAID or non uh, steroidal anti inflammatory drug, what they do is, okay, they inhibit the action, they inhibit the activity or the action of cyclooxygenase. All right. The third principal type of um, eicosanoid is called leukotriene. Leukotriene again are derived from uh, a fatty acid with 20 carbon atoms. Still, the fatty acid is called arachidonic acid. As what you can see here, arachidonic acid is the um, starting molecule. Okay, so arachidonic acid is uh, acted upon by cyclooxygenase which could be blocked by NSAIDs okay um, inhibiting the formation of prostaglandin and thromboxane all right um, arachidonic acid okay on the other uh, side arachidonic acid is the um, starting material and the enzymes that act on the prost the arachidonic acid is called 5 um, lipoxygenase okay 5 lipoxygenase and from this from arachidonic acid the products are uh, leukotrienes and its derivatives leukotrienes promote inflammatory and hypersensitivity responses um if you have an allergy, your doctor may have prescribed um, um, anti-allergy, um, anti-allergy medicine, and those anti-allergy um, medicine could simply block these enzymes. It could be the 5 lipoxygenase enzyme or uh, li uh, here, leukotriene hydroxylase. Okay, so the anti-allergy, it depends on the type of drug. Those, um, those um, anti-allergy drug could simply inhibit these enzymes. Okay, some of these enzymes or any of these enzymes. All right. And the last but not the least uh, group or classification of lipids based on function is called protect protective coating lipids okay they are called biological waxes protective lipids in a sense that uh, they protect the um, the leaves for example to prevent um, water loss okay these molecules are monoester of a long fatty acid and a long alcohol chain. So here you have a long fatty acid chain and you have uh, a molecule here that has an alcohol. Remember when alcohol and a fatty acids or when, a, when an alcohol and fatty acids combine, okay, we have, we form what we call an ester okay um, fatty acids that are found in biological waxes they have generally saturated fatty acids it's going to be long one which contain 14 to 36 carbon atoms okay they serve as repellent okay because of the long non-polar carbon chains so you expect that this biological waxes they are present on the surface of the leaves or on the uh, uh, fruits okay which acts as water repellent 